to the concepts video on functions and function notation. So basically, um, in the real world, there are several relationships, um, kind of an infinite amount of relationships between quantities, uh, two quantities or three quantities, or etc. In this case, we're going to talk about two quantities uh, that change. Um, for example, we could have like, here are two things, so uh, age and height, okay, um, of people this is. Uh, there's a relationship between those, like depending on a person's age, there's about a, an average height that they um, are. Okay, and then um, another thing, another example would be like um, the amount of products a company sells. So products sold, we could say. Products sold um, and uh, money earned or I'll just say profits gained, okay? All right, so these are definitely related. Uh, that's an important relationship that um, companies have to explore. Right, and then um, another example. Let's say maybe time, because we could have time as a variable, right? So time that's a quantity, and um, population of a town or a city or a state or anything like that. Okay, and etc. There are many, many more. All right. So based on this, um, with all of these examples, with these three examples and the etc. Um, and more, if we know one quantity, uh, because there is a relationship between each of these. Uh, respectively, right? If we know one of the quantities, let's say like age or product sold or time, um, then we can kind of, it, it leads us to knowing the quantity of the other respectively, like right height and uh, the profits gained and population respectively. So what we can do is uh, model the relationship between two quantities with what's called a function, okay? And I'll, I'll write that definition on the next slide. Okay, so what we can do is we can model uh, the relationship relationship uh, between, I'll just abbreviate here, between um, two or more quantities with a function, with a function, okay? Okay, so what is a function? Uh, so let me just draw it out for you. So we have, let's say we have some kind of input this is one of our quantities, okay? So this is like quantity number one, and we have some kind of output. This is quantity number two, okay? So for example, this would be kind of like having our age here and our height here, okay? So we just make one be the input and the other be the output. And in between, the way you get from one to the other, from input to output, is what you have to do is go through what's called a function. Okay, so here's our function right here. It's kind of like a machine where you stick in the input and then it does its thing, whatever the function is doing, and then you get, it spits out an output for us, okay? So in um, more mathematical terms, what we do for each of these is we don't write like input and output and all of these words and things like in English or anything like that, but instead we use variables, okay? So for input, we usually use something like x, okay? And this is called the independent variable. That's the uh, specific or like the official term for what this is. So this is called the independent variable, and I'll explain why. Whereas um, our output is usually represented by a y or something like that. And we're not restricted to using x and y. This is just for d demonstrative purposes. Okay, and this is called our dependent variable. Dependent and variable. Okay, and in between here, um, in order to get from x to to y, like I said, we have to go through a function, and usually that's denoted by an f of x, okay? That's how you say it, f of x, okay? And that th this says this is our function, and x inside the parentheses means it depends on x, okay? And sometimes we, we just equal this to y, because it is y, right? And I'll put this in a box, because it's kind of like a machine, right? So we have something, we're sticking in our input, which is x, we're putting it into the machine, which is our function, uh, which is notated like this, and then out comes our y, our dependent variable. So now to explain why um, one's called an independent variable and the other's called a dependent, that basically just means that our independent variable uh, can change freely, okay? So let me write that here. This one changes freely. We can just make it to be whatever value we want. We can stick in any input we want, okay? Changes freely, whereas once you put it through the machine, it for every input that you have, um, your output depends, this output meaning y, it depends on what you put in, right? Because you can't just get some output and then it doesn't go the other way. It only goes, it's a one-way function, right? So this one here depends, depends 
um, on our x, right? It can change as well, um, just as our x can change, but the change in y depends on x, okay? So now let's go over uh, what's called function notation, okay? And I gave you guys a little preview of it on the last slide, which might have looked a little bit funny because we haven't seen that before. Um, this is Function notation is basically a simple way, um, simple way of writing or talking about functions, okay? Of writing functions. So the way we represent it is uh, y is equal to f of x, okay? And this just means y, our, in, our dependent variable that is, our output, is equal to a function of x, okay? Or this is also, we could also say or, sometimes this is represented or written as y of x, where x is our input and uh, y is our output, okay? So let me go a little bit more in detail about this, this thing right here, okay? And so the y... That's going to be our output, like I said on the other one. So this y is our output, okay? F, um, well, the, the equal sign means is, is. The f stands for function, function. And then the parentheses mean of. So function of, and then we write whatever variables on the inside, function of x. So this basically means um, output is a function of x, and whereas x is our input, okay? So output is a function of our input. That makes sense, right? Because when we talk about the whole machine analogy, this and that. Okay, so let's do an example of this. Let's take the phrase um, height. We'll use the age and height one, okay? So height is a function uh, of age, let's say. Alrighty? So we're going to take this phrase and turn it into uh, a function using function notation. So let's just write it down. We'll just break it down in plain English and try to get into formula, um, into like some kind of function notation form. So we could say, well, height again. Height is, that means an equal sign, so is uh, a function. So we could put an F here. Fun function of, so we have to have something inside parentheses, and I'll just write age. Okay? So this is pretty good. This is looking more like our function notation, right, up here. Um, but we can simplify a little bit further. We can just take out height, just abbreviate it to make one variable, h, is equal to f of, and age will abbreviate to just an a, okay? So h equals f of a. That, that looks like this here, right? Our function notation. Or we could also write, we could just combine it and say h, height, is a function of a, okay? So, and this would be, this would be read as h of a. Alrighty? Okay, so now let's go over something that's super important, uh, an important slash defining, defining uh, characteristic of a function. Characteristic of a function. Okay, and this is important because this is true for all functions, all right, of a function. And I'll just box this because that's the important term here. So the most important thing about a function, what makes a function a function is that for every unique input that we have, for every unique input, uh, there is only uh, one unique output. Okay, so this might be a little bit confusing. Like, what unique meaning it's different from the rest? Or basically, yes. Um, so unique just means let. I think that. Um, it's easier to understand once we go through an example. So let me show you guys through an example what this means. So let's do a table as a function, as a function. Okay, so here I'm going to list, um, I'll just make a table, okay? So we have x and y, x is our input, y is our output, okay? And let's just see um, a table of values, right? So negative one, let's say two, um, zero, five, uh, one, seven, and 2, 9, or something like that, okay? So here, this means, these are these all come in pairs. So if we input negative 1 into some function, let's say it's f of x or whatever, y is equal to some function of x, right? So this is our input row, and this is our output row, okay? So anyway, so this is a pair here, this negative 1. When you stick in a negative 1, you get out a 2. When you put in a 0, you get out a 5. When you put in a 1, you get out 7. And when you put in a 2, you get 9, okay? So that's basically that part there. Okay, so now um, what we're going to think is, okay, so let's look back at our important characteristic up at the top. Okay, I'll box that for us here. 
So let's look at this. So for every unique input, there's only one unique output. Okay, so let's see if this table here holds. Let's see if this is representing a function or not. So for every unique input, so negative 1 gives us a 2. Okay, so that's good. Um, 0 gives us a 5. That's fine. 1 gives us a 7, and 2 gives us a 9. So there are no repeated um, x values. There are no repeated inputs that give us more than uh, different outputs, right? So this one here, this is a function. So yes, um, we can say this is a function. f of x is a function. And let me show you guys um, a counter example where, where we'll get something that's not a function, okay? So you can see what that looks like. So let's say we have x and y again. All right, so this is a different function now. And I'll just make a different table. So let's say we have negative 1, 2, r0, 5, uh, negative 1, 3, and 3, 9. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. So again, this top row is our input row, and this is our output, okay? And so we just look uh, straight up and down to find our pairs here, right? So we have negative 1 goes to 2, so this is a unique input and our unique output. That's good. That's it. And then 0 and 5, that's fine. Looks good. And look, okay, here we have another negative 1 popping up, but if we get a 2 for the output, we should be fine. That, that's the same unique output that we got before. But no, we have a 3 here now, so this right here causes a problem because we have negative 1 going to 2 and 3 at the same time, and that's not allowed. Uh, that means that this table here, this bottom one, is not a function. This is, does not represent a function, okay? Just because for the same input, this negative 1, we're getting two different outputs. We're getting more than one unique output, and we can't have that with functions. Okay, so let's do a couple more examples of those tables, and uh, let's see if we can identify whether something's a, a table is representing a function or not, okay? So here's our x and y, and let's say negative 1, 2, 0, 5, uh, 1, 7, negative 1, 2. Okay, so this one, um, it looks pretty good. It's, okay, so we have this first pair, negative 1, 2, uh, 0, 5, we're good, 1, 7, yep. And then again, we run into negative 1. So it's like, wait, this might cause a problem. But we see that it leads us to that same 2 that we had before. So that means for the exact same input, uh, even though we input negative 1 two times, we still got the same output, which is fine. That means our machine is working properly. It's consistent with itself, okay? So this one here, even though we have two um, pairs that are repeated, they're exactly the same. So um, we're good here, and this, this is a function. So yes, um, a function. Alrighty? Now let's do one more example of a table that we could see. So here's our x and y. Here's a new problem. Alrighty? So let's say we have a negative 1, 1 this time. Mixing it up here. Uh, 0, 5, and 1, 1. Okay, so let's look at this. So we have, we input a negative 1, we get out of 1. We input 0, we get out of 5. Input 1, we get out of 1. Wait, okay. So we got the same output. So these are the same, right? Same output for different input. Same output for uh, two different inputs, right? Because for one of them, we inputted a negative 1, and the other one, we stuck in a, a positive 1. And then we got out the same answer. Wait, is that allowed? Um, and the answer would be yes. You can always get, you can get the same, you can reach the same ending or the same output, just um, even if you put in different inputs. That's fine, okay? That just means that for different um, inputs, our function just happened to spit out this, the same exact output, and that's fine. It's just the only problem comes in, so I'll just put yes here, just so we're clear on that. So yes, this is still a function, okay? Um, so the only problem comes in is when you put in one single input and you get more than then and uh, you can get more than or yeah one output like two two or more different outputs when you get that like on the previous slide then that means we do not have a function <laughs>